mean is they were chasing them around in a circle in the parking lot of the uh, McDonald's. And he did a couple circles before he came to came to a stop, but we had the exits blocked. So he couldn't get out. He's obviously uh, ended up being an extreme DWI. Um, Four, seven, 17 Snelling Avenue for a male has blood cut in a lighter and just broke the window of the store. So the urinating party then just broke the window. So now we're going north on Rice Street into Little Canada. The on the side we're on, on the other side is uh, is Roseville. Up here a ways is where our deputy uh, spotted the car that was leaving the scene of the lamplighter shooting. In fact, you got get that. What, tell I us do, about that. I do. Give me one second. That's still unsolved. And um, it's really, if there's people out there that can help us solve that case, that would be really helpful. There was 60 people in the parking lot of the Lamplighter when this fight started. There was 20 some videos that were being taken. We know a lot of people have video of the incident. And she was shot. What was her name? Kia or, or Nia? Nia. Nia. Nia or Nia? Nia you, Black. Nia Black. Is the name. So, what? It was at the lamplighter. A little was in the lamplighter parking lot, but not actually in related to the lamplighter. There was a gathering in the parking lot up there by the laundromat. That's correct. So what day was that? June thirteenth. June thirteenth. June thirteenth. What else do we know about that? Not no. much other than that. It was just like the sheriff said. It was a large fight in the parking lot. There were several shots fired. Um, I'm not sure if the victim may have been involved in a dispute prior to this. And I know there was some stuff that was posted on public social media regarding this. And lots of people had their cell phones out filming it. Yeah, so we know it's we know that somebody knows what happened, and uh, you know you can contact me directly at that text number six five one four four eight three eight one zero four four eight three eight one zero, or call the St. Paul Police Department Homicide Unit because they are uh, investigating the case, and the, the, mo the mother is just distraught. Two a.m. About clear report. Why we can't solve that and why people aren't coming forward, especially all the people that were there. Or somehow or you know, she was not a combatant. And we're going east east on Little Canada Road. And uh, I'm going to stop here. There's a hookah. There aren't many hookahs. You know, I mentioned before that I work very closely with the Somali community in developing relationships with them. And uh, there's a hookah right up here in Little Canada. It's one of the last ones left where a lot of the Somali... Well, I don't smoke hookah, but I do socialize once in a while here with my Somali friends. I don't know if any of them are in there watching this video. But if they are, come on outside because you know I'm not coming in because the hookah makes my clothes smell. So, beautiful sunset. 2502 13th Terrace Northwest. So, Got an eight-year-old with a zip tie. The hookah hideout here. Um, it's cutting off the circulation. It's the hookah hideout. A lot of cities have closed them down. Um, using a health department standard about smoking, but similar. This hookah is similar to cigar shops. Where people can sample the hookah. I don't know if anybody's in there. Omar Jamal, are you around out there or not? Because Omar Omar Jamal, one of the leaders in the and spokespersons in the Somali community, is typically here, but I do not see his car. Twenty three, show me five three six. Okay. Gonna move on from the hookah hideout. Three, six, used to be uh, used to be a great hookah yeah, down on Grand nice. Avenue. Then there was one on Rice and University, Capital, Capital Hookah. 
a lot of them have been shut down. Pull a little further north on Rice Street, you think, Joe? Sure. I like that idea. It's kind of why we don't start till 9 or 10. Usually just... I mean, there are a lot of times that it's really busy right now. But... Um, well, the weather's been cool for a while. Maybe that had some, some effect, huh? I think so. I think so. I mentioned I have a 90 year old mother that I usually take lunch to on Sundays and so my wife thank you Christine my wife has uh, we're gonna say that this is where usually I get her the, the shrimp here a Culver's <laughs> she loves the Culver's shrimp and take her to take it to her house in Maplewood so I texted my wife earlier and she has successfully ordered a pizza at the Rice and Larpenter Domino's. So, I don't know, are you getting us any canned pop too? I promised them some lemonade. So, we're going to run up to our border real quick. Some people have been asking how far our district goes. And as I mentioned, we, we control Shoreview and Arden Hills, Vadness Heights, Gem Lake, North Oaks, and Falcon Heights. Hardware Hank. Hank and a little Venetian down there. Avenue. Compass a neighbor advising 11 or 12 people at this address are playing loud music and smoking in the street. Great restaurant. Great, so tell me. One of my favorite for pasta. It's a good competitor to Cassetta's. You know, my cousin, my cousin Gail married, married Dave Cassetta. He's got great pasta. I'll take your DOC 11 to Wabashaw. I don't want to drive that far. The little Venetian is awesome. I thought you were ready for So we're north on Rice Street coming up at 694. A lot of construction here in uh, Badness Heights, they're putting in three roundabouts. Not sure how that's all going to work, but they claim that the roundabouts are going to reduce the traffic. Hampton at 10-1, 1 you can be clear. Hampton at 10-1, 1 you can be clear. Hampton at 10-1, 1 you can be clear. Cuts down on the developmental business land, but Keeps the traffic moving a little faster. One away, they're going on the SA call also on snowing. 2022. All right, so that's Vadness Heights off to our right there. We're gonna we're gonna jump on the freeway here. If they'll allow me to here in this roundabout and run down to Lexington. trails out here, Shoreview of Adnes Heights around the lakes, some great biking uh, places as well. camera 
Look, still plugged in? We're still plugged in. We are live. Looks good. Hey, you're on that We got the zip terror mode. You can cancel on it. Copy. Coming on to Victoria here. Slice of Shoreview Parade in front of Island Lake Park. Really one of the greatest, you know, festivals. I especially like the slippy slide that the fire fire department puts out there. Of course, things are different this year. Is there a supervisor that can respond or we have an uncooperative right now? I did have a high speed chase up here uh, early on after I came back as sheriff. Well, we just had one the I'm other sorry, we just had one the other day with the three kids. I don't know if you saw our video. Well, pretty common to have chases here on 694. We had a high speed one the other day that was on 694. 1650 beam, sweet 200. Three kids. Alarm, 13 year olds driving at 100 miles an hour in a stolen car that was taken in a uh, carjacking. And 40, to be frank with you, it was tough for us to keep up with them, but we had we had the state patrol 40, helicopter up and followed them right to their house in Minneapolis, where they jumped out and went in their side, and we were able to surround the house. This is just uh, a couple days ago around the house and get a hold of the mom the mom convinced them to come out and uh, sadly this is a reoccurring occurrence with a lot of these young kids they're robbing people of their wallets phones cash and taking their car you can go to my uh, Facebook page some of the other postings you can see this has been a growing problem for this summer really ever since COVID started but even a little right, before, copy. Joe, actually Joe's an expert and he knows all these kids, we can't mention any names. Anything you want to add, Joe? Uh, uh, not really, I think you covered a lot of it. Fifth twenty-three. What's the most amazing part, their age? Yeah, the, the age certainly is surprising. Um, you know, 13, 14, 15, and it, the, the, the sad, I guess, or uh, what can be disturbing is it's not the first time or first offense, they've multiple times um, that these juveniles have been involved in, in stuff like this. Um, so, yeah. Well, if you watch the video that's on my page, you'll see the mother's very, very, uh, very frustrated. You know, we had a lot of deputies. This this area is patrolled by the sheriff's deputies. They do an awesome job up here. We got. Because they do an awesome job, we got great community support. I don't know what that is on channel one. one. Um, I missed it too, Sheriff. Sure. I copy conscious breathing. Uh, medic, it's a, it's a medical. But because our deputies are so outstanding up here, we have broad community support. Very, very thankful um, for that community support up here. Actually, um, you know. Per capita, our department has the lowest number of complaints in the state of Minnesota. We're really actually very proud of that. Um, so it's, but I try to run in on calls as often as I can. Plus up here in the, in the suburbs, our, all of our officers, our deputies are trained as first responders. So they have an extra level of training and they usually carry oxygen and are able to treat people in case they get there before the medics. Now, I don't think I would I would be Bob Fletcher if I drove by this Dairy Queen. So we're gonna get in here and get a couple cones, Joe. Sure. You okay with that? I'm okay with that. It's not as good as Twinkies and Mountain Dew, but very very close. I just want to add to what the what the first responders um a lot of the deputies are most if not all carried Narcan. Yep. So and that's been huge with saving lives with overdoses, as you all are aware. Yeah, of. no, it's an amazing thing Narcan. Um, you know we have we have two in here actually. I try to keep some fresh ones. This line's a little bit too long, so we're gonna have to hit the Dairy Queen later. 
don't like don't ever want to get stuck in a line in case an important call comes out and then if you can't get out of the line you can't get to people that need you so maybe we'll catch a dairy queen later narcan oxygen defibrillators we got a number of defibrillators a naked male inside the restaurant, Joel. Where is that downtown? Where is that? <laughs> that is okay. 350 yeah. St. Peter, a Japanese restaurant. <laughs> and there you have a little humor. Somebody's laughing into the radio. 530 also being rough. Copy. That's the thing. Everybody gets, wants to go to that call. <laughs> No, he's probably got some mental illness. That's the sad part about it. Copy, 175, could you head to 707 Holly, Obama Elementary School? On the west side of the building for 8 to 10 people playing dice and using narcotics. Could be intoxication, that does happen. But yeah. Usually there's but some mental nice. illness there. And try to get the. Usually that party will end up at Regions with a 72 hour hold for evaluation, detoxification, and some type of help. From a psychologist. He's now outside walking towards the hotel in So now he left left the restaurant still naked. Okay. Twenty thirty. Five thirty, I'm sorry, just to clarify, did you say this gentleman was naked? Affirmative. Happy two-way alert further. Can you have medics in the area, please? Yeah. I will start medics. He's going to stage medics in the area so that if they need to transport them to the hospital and there's other, other health issues, the medics are outstanding. Central Park in Roseville? I got sorry, sir. You can clear the narcotics out assisted. I'm not sure what street we're talking about, maybe fourth. Okay. Hey, you Just to our right here is the John Rose Oval. Probably one of the greatest right. greatest uh, skating venues yeah, actually in the in the country. And certainly a family friendly venue, well I'll tell you. My family spends a lot of time there, and uh, highly recommend it. Even if you haven't skated before, they have rental skates there, but they're also uh, they have four hockey the, rinks uh, in the middle where you can have a little okay. pickup hockey games, and then they have a big oval. The oval, actually, that was built back when She's gonna be a black male Rudy Perpich was the governor, trying to create a competitive training right, center both that and some of the area up in Blaine for the soccer and for biking just just putting us putting us uh, on the map so what a, just a great venue up there The guy that's always there is 66 year old Roy Magnuson, 66, former teacher at Como Park, now works for us. All right, technically, a, a, uh, uh, hang on a second. He got shorts on. He seems agitated. Uh, could be our guy, but he's, this guy's got pants on. He's following a guy downtown that seems agitated but has some shorts Copy. on. But Roy Magnuson, um, just an unbelievable role model football coach, wrestling coach at Como High School. He uh, he left there to come work at the sheriff's office. We're very honored to have him. And um, he's always at the Oval. The reason I mention him, he's at the Oval opening night. He gets many more laps in than me. And uh, just... When you're when you're there, look for the oldest guy there. I'm, he's actually six months older than me, so I would say he's the oldest guy there. <laughs> Just had his birthday last week. If any of you know Roy from Como, 
send him a send him a happy birthday wish in the comments. Uh, three, six, seven. Three, six, seven. It's coming down Lexington to County Road B. Bridgman's. Those of you that used to live around here, I don't know where the Bridgman's was. It was right here somewhere. Well, we better go. We gotta go pick the pizza up for the. Oh, I forgot all about the pizza. Pepperoni and sausage. John Rose was uh, 